Hey, it's Becky. Welcome back for another Gadget Teardown. This time, we're taking a look at the Amazon Halo Band, a fitness tracker that also provides tone of voice analysis. As creepy as that sounds, I wore the Halo Band for a few weeks to try it out before I took it apart to see what's inside. I found out my science communicator friend Vanessa was also intrigued to do her own experiments with the device, so we joined forces. And my channel's favorite electrical engineer, David Craner, is back again to shed some light on the design and manufacturing of the circuit board inside. This thing's got sensors for movement, heart rate, and pulse oximetry, as well as the microphones necessary to clearly record your speech. The packaging is mostly recyclable, except for a few plastic bits. It comes with a USB charging clip. During the app setup, you're asked to read some training text aloud to train it to listen to your voice only, but I'm not convinced it works reliably as such. I wore it while teaching my grad class at SBA, and I wore it during video meetings with my old colleagues. I found that occasionally it would mistake other women for me, which gives this suspicious user even less confidence in what this thing has to say about how I sound. It's quite lightweight, but then again, it doesn't have a screen. The fabric band easily disconnects from the main body of the device. The only way the device communicates with the wearer, other than the app, is a small LED on the side, which shines in multiple colors depending on the occasion. There's also a single button and two small holes where the microphones are. It's clear that this thing is glued shut, so I use acetone to try to loosen the adhesive while prying at the seams. I eventually managed to cut my way into the enclosure with a pair of small snips, destructively. This thing's not going back together after this point. This plastic piece has two connectors leading into it, so there's gotta be an antenna in there, but we'll come back to that later. Inside the main body of the device, which is one solid piece of metal, the circuitry is secured with four tiny screws. After removing them, the whole circuit pops right out, and we can see that it's made of different types of PCB material wrapped around a battery. I ripped one of them accidentally while unwrapping it. I can easily spot the major interactive components on this side of the board, including the LEDs and photodiodes for the heart rate and pulse ox sensors, the microphones, the button, the interface LED, and the charging pins. But I could use some expert consultation on this advanced feat of design and manufacturing, so I invited over my friend, the electrical engineer. Hey, Becky. Hey, David. How's it going? Good. You know we have a door. That's all right. This works. The plant's looking good. Thank you. Ah. Here it is. So let's look at your microscope and see what we've got here. This is a really nicely integrated little board situation mm -hmm. that they've got here. They've used a lot of like really high tech stuff. What's cool is that this is what's called a rigid flex circuit board, which makes a really tightly tight integration between a rigid PCB and a flexible PCB. And you can see they've got these like custom stiffeners on there that are actually contoured in 3D oh, to make wow. it fit inside of the the enclosure and wrap around. Side. Yeah, but see, like it's oh. actually like a physically shaped thing. Um, this is the underside, so like the main part of this that we're looking at right here, these are the actual sensors that determine your heart rate and blood oxygen level. Mm -hmm. You can see that here, there's actually two LEDs and two photodiodes. The transmitters and the receivers, yeah, basically, we've, right? we've looked it up. And this is, this is a high intensity green LED right here, and then a photodiode. And then this is actually a package that has a red LED and a, and a green LED. And, and an infrared. And right? also an infrared transmitter. You can see all three of the dye and wires what's there. what's cool on these is it's, even though it's in one package, you can see that it's actually just these tiny little bits of silicon put in here, and then there's, then there's wires, wire bonded. Um, yeah, that's so cool. Inside of it, and then it's all potted inside of its own epoxy. Uh, your blood transmits light differently depending mm -hmm. on how much oxygen that it has in right. it. So it's actually a pretty elegant little sensor, and it, and it really doesn't cost that much, but they actually have very high precision. So just looking around the rest of the board real quick, 
over here. That part was touching this part of the enclosure with that weird pink stuff. What is that pink with stuff? The weird pink stuff. What's yeah. the pink stuff? Ooh. Uh, I believe that. Thermal I think it's just base? some foam. Foam? It's but it's like it's so like I, gooey. I'll poke it. Maybe it's dried up, but it's it like so it was gooey see. when I first like a, like a thermal paste yeah. kind of when I first opened well, this it. This is a oh yeah, it's coming off of my tweezers yeah. a little bit. This is a this is a temperature sensor, so maybe it's something maybe it's something that's meant oh, to Oh, that is a temperature a sensor bit. because yeah. wouldn't it be then thermally trying to get it to because this looks like that thermally bonds it to the actual metal enclosure that's touching your wrist. Maybe it's so. It's to a temperature it. sensor for detecting your body oh. temperature, not for detecting its own. Because you said it's well, it could sensor. be both. Because there's actually one of these temperature sensors over here, and then <laughs> there's another one over here as well. It actually has two. When you have things with lithium polymer batteries, it is nice to have a battery temperature sensor so that for safety reasons, yeah. because you would be able to tell if the battery is getting into a condition where it's starting to heat up which with lithium polymer batteries can be a problem. So, so these are MEMS microphones. Uh, MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical System. And it's really interesting technology because, you know, with a microphone you need to have an element that vibrates that can be turned into an electrical signal. And so they actually use these teeny tiny microfabrication processes that are similar to the way that they make computer chips, except they're making tiny structures that can vibrate, and so that's why and that's how they can be so small. Yeah, that's how they can and be so water, small. And waterproof. But that's also why they need to put it inside of a can like this to protect it, because it's actually a mechanical component. It's just very, very, very tiny. I think there's an LED on the the long piece, right? Because that go, that's yeah. what goes into the wrist, the part that faces you, where you can you see can, whether it's charging. Yeah. Or not. So this is another LED right here. I spy with my little eye. How many wires? It looks like two dies are right there. Yeah. Well, then a red one and a green one. Yeah. Uh, for charging and done charging. Mm-hmm. What else is down here? Oh, Wait, this what's... button. Oh, yeah, the button. Oh, this button, it's so tiny. Press it. I can press it. Press the button. Boop. Push the button. And see, these are all part of, this is all part of the waterproofing. You can see it's, 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 they it's, call, all, it's they shiny. Call it, they call it potting when they put some epoxy over uh -huh. components. Keep them from physically getting yeah. uh, agitated and also. And also from water from getting in. Sweat and water. Then we've got down here following the other with the microphone. It was and microphone. We had those little pogo pins for connecting to the charger. Right, so they're little spring loaded, little spring -loaded tabs little so things. that you get good power contact. What's that? This is actually a little plug. For what? Oh, is that um, for the antenna? It's like a little coax yeah. connector. So then a teeny tiny little coax here's, connector. Here's the antenna. So bring the antenna into play. Came out of it's like on the top of the device and it has those This is where the two pogo pins go. Wait, the coax where does the coax connector go then? I don't know. <laughs> you know, that might be for debugging or something. Unfortunately, all of the super interesting components on this board are under this are under this can back here. So we know from doing our research from the much more thorough teardown on Hackaday, mm -hmm. that there is actually a 256 megabyte flash memory on here. That so can store a lot of audio. That can store a lot of audio. So I mean, that could be using, it could be using it as a buffer, but also there's other things that you might want to have a large flash memory on your, on your device for. If, I mean, it stores, we're, we're not covering all of the other fitness tracking mm -hmm. stuff that it stores. It probably stores all of that data too, right? Your yeah. accelerometer data and your, your steps count and all that stuff for the next time it pairs with the phone. But you know me, I'm only interested in the unique feature on this thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks, uh, David. Your your analysis, as always, is appreciated. Yes, no problem. <laughs> this is really great. I always enjoy coming over here and hanging out with the microscope, looking at tiny things. Same. <laughs> we watched that expert tear down carefully as they milled away the metal and then hot aired off the can and everything else just came with it, leaving little hope for reading the part numbers on the ICs themselves. They used their advanced skills to make predictions about the parts based on the traces on the circuit board itself underneath the chips potted in epoxy. Definitely go check out this other teardown to read more on that. If you're curious about any of the tools used in this video, you can check out a complete list with links in the description, all from DigiKey, the sponsor of this video. They carry everything you need from tweezers to hot air rework stations and ship super fast. After borrowing David's microscope, I got to get me one of these. Of course, DigiKey has those too. After taking apart the halo band, Vanessa and I sat down to compare notes.
why I was so interested in it is that it's so vastly different from other things that fitness trackers measure. Like your heart rate and your steps and even parts of your sleep score. They're pretty objective. They're right? very objective. Yeah. <laughs> like you, your heart only beats so many times per minute. It's a fact, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes the sleep tracking or the steps are a little bit off in terms of accuracy, but it's like in the ballpark. It's just measuring this one thing. But with tone, like... Like, uh, everyone who's listening to this will interpret my tone a little bit differently. Like, there's so many layers of perception in, that are kind of baked into tone that whoever coded this it has their bias going into Right, the training the data. And yeah. I would love something that would help me believe that this is accurate is for them to, sh to share the training data set with us, right? And a lot of artificial intelligence things, they don't want to share with you the data set they use to train it because they're afraid you'll find bias in the data set. Almost all, like every data set has some kind of bias. So I think there's a lot of big questions that come out of this. Yeah. One is, does the technology work? The second is, is it useful? And then the third is, is this something that we need to measure actually? Vanessa explored these questions in her Halo video, which I'll link in a card and the description. The thing that I find fascinating about the backstory of all of these devices and features is there were definitely countless meetings that countless executives sat in to talk about this and to weigh up the pros and cons and features and even the marketing team, they would have been talking about the privacy thing. The marketing team might be watching this video. Y'all have a weird job. Yeah, <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you're really using all those benefits <laughs> to their full potential. Bang, um, am I right? So how does machine learning like this work with audio? It's going to be looking at the frequency and probably the pattern of frequencies that happen in the phrase that you're saying. So if you're saying up at the end, that's different than down at the end. And so I think it's, my guess is it's taking the audio file and mm -hmm. it's doing some uh, math on the file to determine the different frequencies and the like pattern of the frequencies. And then it takes that pattern and it tries to match it to other pieces of information in its data set. And it says like, oh, okay, where I've seen this pattern before, that data was called embarrassed or that data was called amused. And so it mm. looks for the pattern matching. Um, how it does the actual audio um, offloading, the device has two microphones on it. The device has a, a wireless transmitter that's um, Bluetooth that shoves the audio over Bluetooth to your phone and the Amazon Halo app is mm -hmm. what's doing the audio analysis. It's not happening on the device. Um, but it's also not happening in the cloud, according to them. According to them, your audio is never sent to the cloud. It stays mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. That was a very focused and interested and confident explanation. <laughs> <laughs> it's very dystopian, the whole thing, I think. It's very fitting for how we, where we are in society right now that we have all this. Training time. We're training our own machine learning. Let's bullshit. hop on board the Schwarzenegger train. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. You felt that you never saw all around him. We're done. Behold, Arnold's <laughs> halo. <laughs> all right, let's play those Arnie tracks back again. Now the first rule in a crisis situation, you negotiate first, and you attack last. Well, you negotiate first and then you attack. You never negotiated. Nah. You don't know what kind of an enemy I am. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, Vincent's brother. We're twins. That's right. Get my knife, I'm gonna cut it up afterwards. Satisfied, appreciative. Isn't it fantastic, huh? But Delighted. the same story is that there's millions and millions of people out there that cannot afford a turkey, they don't have the means for a turkey. So this is why, for the last 20 years, I've been going out to the Hollenberg Center in East Los Angeles to donate 500 turkeys and hand out the 500 turkeys. For more info on the behavioral science implications of the tone analysis feature, check out the video over on Vanessa's channel. It's no surprise to me that Amazon scrapped the creepy mics and added a screen to their next version, the Halo View, and relegated the tone of voice analysis to just the app. What devices should I take apart next? Drop your suggestions in the comments below.
If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This video was made with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.